In this tutorial, we're gonna dive back into the particle nodes modifier and learn how to create a point attract modifier. So let's get started. Hi, my name's Andy Needham. I'm a freelance senior motion designer based in London, and I really appreciate you being here. Thanks for checking out the channel. So without further ado, let's get on with the tutorial. So to give you an idea of what you can achieve once you've built this uh, modifier, I'm just going to press play and you can see that we have some points and the particles are attracted to the points um, and you can stack different uh, attract, point attract modifiers and create something like this. So let's just talk about how the actual point attract modifier is built. Let's create a new scene and we'll create a basic emitter and a particle node modifier. I'm going to double click this and I've got my node graph docked in the bottom here. I've also got my particles layout on the side here. If you don't have a layout, you can come over to the simulate menu, find the emitters and modifiers from this menu here. Uh, and also, if I just undock this, normally when you create a particle node modifier, you get the floating window. I just like to dock it in the interface and also uh, remove the window title and the default attribute manager that's on the side here. So this is where my starting point is normally when I'm working with the particle node modifier. What I'd like to do is talk about our particles. So what they're doing is they're traveling on the z-axis because uh, this is what we've got set up in our direction and the speed. So we want to attract them towards a point and a point is just another vector so we can grab a value node and change the type to be vector and then we can set some values for this so for example it could just be as simple as saying I want it to move 500 on the x and 200 on y so these are positive values and the axis is uh, pointing in the positive direction and you can see the grid spacing is actually 500 units. So we would expect that uh, 500 on X to go here and 200 on Y to be somewhere around here. So if we take this value and um, use a bit of vector math, we can apply the positions of the particles uh, to that and to their velocity. So we need a, an arithmetic node and I'm going to subtract uh, the vectors. So we can type in uh, sub, or we could type in the minus symbol or the word minus, right? And this, you can see in the brackets here in the parentheses, these are the terms you can use to call up the arithmetic node and the operation that it's gonna use. And then uh, I'm gonna type, start typing vector. And this changes the operation and data type to what we want. So we're going to subtract this vector from our position and then apply that to the velocity. So if you're not familiar with vector math, then uh, a lot of this stuff is definitely to do with it. When you're subtracting a vector, it's the same as adding a negative version of the vector. So it's essentially reversing the direction. So we are doing that now. Now, what we, we think is going to go over here and, and to the right and up uh, if we press uh, rewind and play. And you can see that, yes, it does. It goes to that point that we've defined. And we could then make changes to this. So it could go um, minus 300 in the Z axis and it will go now backwards. So they're now going backwards. You can see the positive Z axis is the blue handle here. So we have a point that we can tell our particles to travel in. And this is pretty cool, but wouldn't this be more useful if the point was something in the viewport that we could actually have control on and have a visual indication of where it um, actually is. So I'm thinking a null object, okay? So this could be our point. And this null is currently here. Now let's change the shape to be a locator and increase the size. Maybe 50 might be a bit easier to see on the recording. 
So you can see now that this is the new location of where our particles should travel to. What we need to do is bring this null into the particle node modifier. Now we could do this in a number of ways. It could be a child of the particle node modifier, or if we keep it outside of it, it could be an input, an object link that we use. I'm going to right click in the inputs over here and add an input. And you can see object child would be if we were to have the child and object link is, as you guessed it, for a an object link. So we could drag this point null into the object link could rename this to say point. And if we twirl this down, we get some useful data about the object. Now this null object doesn't have any geometry, so it doesn't actually have any points. So if we were to connect this up in some way, there would be no point in doing that because um, there is no data with this null, okay? so. We need to add the data to the null. And we're going to do that by getting the position in space of the point. So what we can do is choose to transform the vector. We're not going to do the vector. We're going to transform the point. So we need a matrix and this tells us this tells us where this object is in 3D space and a vector. Now we could plug in a value like so, right? And the resulting um, vector that we have would be whatever we have in this value node, right? Which would mean the particles would be then be offset from this amount. Now I don't want that. I want them to be at zero, zero, zero so that the particles go to the center point here of the axis on the null. So we don't need this anymore. We could take this transform point and replace it, replace the connection. So now when we rewind and play, the particles will go to that point. And when we move the null, whoop, we move where the particles go. And that is pretty much all there is to it. So this seems relatively simple. Uh, Let's just uh, remove this value node. We don't need that anymore. But I feel like this concept is very powerful to grasp. Well, it's something that you should grasp, and we're going to be exploring it further in other tutorials. But for completeness, I just want to talk about how we can blend the velocities that are going into the particle node modifier with the ones that are generated by the particle node modifier. If we were to add some turbulence to this scene, Let's add that and let's just um, increase the scale, increase the amount. You'll see that, yeah, we get a little bit going on. Let's increase the number of uh, frames we have as well. So we have this turbulence coming in here, but you know what? You could also adjust the way that these values that we're, we're you know, this, this point value is um, uh, having an effect on the whole thing, right? So it's essentially the strength of this effect, this this uh, this node. So this point <clears throat> attract modifier, and we can do that uh, with a mix. So I'll grab a mix, drop it on the wire, and I d I want this to be when when it's at a hundred percent, I want the modifier to be in control, and when it's at zero, I want just the velocity. <clears throat> that is going into the modifier to be uh, in control, right? So this blend amount that we have here is the slider that we can use and we could expose this as an input. So we'll create a new input. And when we click on here, we can see we've got our blend value. So if at 100%, this is exactly where we were, right? And then at zero, we have just whatever the particle direction uh, and velocity is plus turbulence. And so now we have a more usable uh, rig that we can blend in this. So it's still traveling towards the point, but more and more, more of that turbulence is coming through. So it looks a lot more, for me, more visually appealing. And so 
with that said, this is uh, essentially like the this is essentially the principles of of the whole effect that I was talking about at the top here. So if we go back to um, my original scene, um, I've used a, a scale just to increase some of the speed, and that's something I can talk about in another tutorial. But if you want to support me and support the channel, you can get this project file and dig around at it and uh, have a look for yourself how it's all put together. And uh, you can see it's a bit more built out. We're using multiple point attract modifiers um, and things like that to build out this scene. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. I really appreciate you. If you want to, give us a like, maybe subscribe. You know what to do. All right, take care. And I hope to see you in another tutorial. Bye.